Today we're going to read Where Do You Sleep, Little One by Patricia Hooper. Little chipmunk digging deep in the yard. Where do you sleep? Underneath the roots and loam, I follow many hallways home. Little field mouse, gray and shy, where are you when owls fly? I have made myself a bed of leaves and bark as soft as bread. Little fawn who ventures near, where are you when stars appear? In the forest, dark and warm, I can slumber far from harm. Little wren who's left the nest, will you find a place to rest? In the shelter of a tree, sleep will comfort me. Little rabbit in the snow, night is near and you must go. Deep in thickets, safe inside, tangled hedges, I will abide. Little spider on the wall, tell me, do you sleep at all? When the stars light up in the skies, I weave a cradle just my size. Little pony, goat, and sheep, what warm bed does someone keep filled with straw so you can sleep? In our stable dreams are deep, little child, now go to sleep. The end. So after reading Where Do You Sleep, Little One, we are going to go out on the trails and see if we can find the remnants or some animal homes um, just to take a look and see where these little critters live. Hey y'all, so the first animal house that we're going to take a look at is actually a man-made animal house, um, but it's a bat house, which you can see a little bit behind me, but I'll give you a better look. So bat houses are incredibly important just because with a lot of human intervention, um, bats tend to lose their natural habitats and their natural homes. And so a lot of people elect to build bat houses in their yards um, simply because bats are a really great pollinator. Um, they pollinate different types of plants, which is beneficial for our ecosystems. Additionally, bats are a pest control and they munch on a lot of mosquitoes which make them pretty lovely to have around just because mosquitoes are so annoying but right here we have a bat house um, for little brown bats I believe and they are on very long black poles and this prevents any predators from being able to climb up the house and harm the bats so another animal home that we're going to look at um, is also human made, but this is a wood duck box. You can see it um, right on that tree there. And wood ducks are actually cavity nesters, which means they like to create their nests in a cavity. And so sometimes this can be in a duck box, but it can also be in old woodpecker holes 
or in old hollow trees. One thing that people can do is uh, build wood duck boxes and it's important um, to understand what habitat that wood ducks like in order to build a box that suits their needs. And so a few of the things are that wood ducks like to be in proximity of water. And so this box is built um, on an ephemeral stream. So right now it's kind of dried up, but normally there would be a bit of water here. And they also need to be built on trees that don't really have any branches where the box is built and can't be built near branches of other trees because different predators like chipmunks um, or raccoons could get into the box and hurt or kill any of the babies in there. So right here we have another animal home and I, unfortunately, there's a spider and a spider web right here and I cannot get my camera to focus in on it. But we're going to take a look at spider webs. And spider webs play two roles for a spider. They are, first and foremost, the spider's home. But the web is made out of silk that a spider creates and secretes from its body. And this silk, the polymers in it, have great strength great elasticity and it's also a bit sticky and because it's hard to see bugs can fly into it they get stuck and then a spider like this one right here will go to a bug in this case it's a little caddis fly um, spin it up in more silk and then essentially eat it um, and so that is the function of spider webs again I'm sorry you can't see this one very well but Here's our little spider friend. He knows I'm here, so he's trying to be a little frantic. But he just caught a little caddis fly, so he has dinner for the day. So the next animal home that we're gonna look at is the humble chipmunk hole. And chipmunks dig extensive burrow systems for their homes. And they dig two different kinds of burrow systems. The first one is a shallow burrow system um, that's typically just used for protection and refuge. If you were on a trail and you walked past a chipmunk, it would make its chipping noises and then it would probably scurry into one of the shallow um, burrow systems just to protect itself from any predators. But they also have deep burrows and the deep burrows are where chipmunks nest they have their babies and they store their food. And so right here we have a chipmunk burrow. I couldn't tell you if this is a shallow or a deep one, but there's one right here. And if I take just a couple steps down the trail, there is another burrow hole right here. And that just kind of shows you how often and how many burrow holes there are or there can be in an area and there's this densely vegetative hill right here and I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of holes in this area as well and the reason that there are so many is that chipmunks tend not to go more than a third of a mile away from a burrow at a time just so it always has a place to hide it always has a food source and it can always be protected so another animal at home that we can look at is where white-tailed deer live. And white-tailed deer actually don't necessarily have a home, but they make beds. And essentially their bed is just where they lay down um, for the night. But right here behind me is actually a pretty good place of where a white-tailed deer may bed. I'm not sure if one has bed here before, um, but I do see a lot of deer in this area, and so this is a potential spot. There's not a whole lot of foliage, but there's some soft grass for them to lay down on. Now, white-tailed deer don't sleep for the full night. They usually just sleep in short spurts, but they do spend a lot of their time bedded, laying down, um, but they are usually on high alert and they don't fall into very deep, deep sleeps um, just so that they can be awake and alert if anything, any predators come for them. So another animal home that we can look at is right underneath a log. And so 
believe it or not, insects and stuff are animals themselves. And so here you can see quite a few different earthworms and they like this area because it's pretty moist. Um, there's also a little critter right there digging around. But insects like to live underneath wood, um, decomposing wood, because they are decomposers. <laughs> and so these animals feast on the wood and the nutrients in the wood and they recycle the nutrients back into the soil. And so looking underneath a log is a really good spot to find some pretty crazy looking critters. So I hope you enjoyed coming around with me to check out different animal homes. Make sure when you come and visit that you look for them too.